I grew up in Mexico City in a very close-knit community that was a great environment to come of age in, but it wasn't an environment that actually pushed women to go into technology or scientific careers. I feel that the message that I got personally from my parents, uh, from the high school that I went to, and the, the friends that I had was, you know, as a woman, it's probably best that you pick a career that's a little easier, maybe more feminine, and also that you don't show to men that you know too much. And it happened to me on several occasions that I had, for example, a boyfriend and the parents of the boyfriend once told me that I was reading too much and that they had observed in, in life that when the woman reads too much, that that could create trouble in a marriage. And I know this sounds incredibly conservative and yes, you know, it, it definitely had pockets of like really conservative, uh, sort of more outdated thinking. It doesn't mean that everyone is like that. But I do think that that environment made me feel that studying physics or math was going to have its troubles in my social life. And I think, for example, my own mother didn't finish high school and she came from Guatemala and she's a lovely person. And, but she was always telling me to like hide the fact that I like math and you know, maybe she was right. <laughs> but the point is that after all these you know, messages that I was getting from media, from people telling me, you know, just pick something else. When it came time after high school to pick a career, I actually ended up picking philosophy instead of physics, partly because physics was at a very far university from where uh, I lived. And partly because of all this societal pressure where, you know, the best advice I ever got from school was, uh, you know, well, you know, physics, that's probably you either have to be a genius or, um, you know, you have to have parents in the field and it's very political and all that. And probably for a woman, you're not going to get too far. And that was like their best advice, the best they could do. So I was really struggling with that. So I went to study philosophy at this private university and I discovered that I had this passion that could just not be satisfied for mathematics. There was one class called Mathematical Logic and I simply devoured the books. I was doing more homework than even my professor had probably done. Like all the, the problems in the book, I probably read like seven or nine chapters and the whole class only covered like four in a semester. And that's when I realized that as much as I try to push that passion down, it was just sprouting and coming up in me again. So I started applying to uh, schools in the United States because I had learned that different to Mexico where you can only study one subject for four years. In the US, they have the liberal arts college experience where you can pick different topics from different fields and you can have two majors and even another minor and things like that. So I was very fortunate to receive a full uh, win scholarship from Brandeis University, which completely changed my life. This is a scholarship that is merit based and I wrote an essay and I passed some specific like math exams for them and and that's how they admitted me as a transfer student and it really changed my life because it immediately kind of infused me with a, a sense of uh, fitting in a place in an environment that actually encouraged me to be a woman in technology and in science. But it was very interesting because still when I transferred, I still wasn't very good in math or at least I thought I couldn't do it because my background had been telling me the message that I couldn't really be that great at it and I believed it. So when I arrived at Brandeis, I started studying philosophy because that was my major back in Mexico. But then I said, I'm going to take one of these courses called Astronomy 101. It was the most basic astronomy course that you can get. And I met the teaching assistant was a man from India by the name of Rupesh. And Rupesh and I became very good friends. And we talked all the time about not only the homework problems, but well beyond that physics and the universe and quantum mechanics and classical mechanics and why do things work the way they do. And our conversations took we entire weekends. And Rupesh told me one day, you're not like the other students. I see that your eyes light up when you come to see me. You don't just want to solve the problems to get an A in the class. 
you really care deeply about science and physics. So one day Rupesh and I are walking near Harvard Square. Actually, it's a place that's very close to my heart because that day my life changed. And I sat um, near a tree and we were looking at the Divinity School, I remember, in Harvard. And we were talking and then, I know it sounds kind of corny, but this, this really happened. I, I started to cry, like I burst out with tears saying to Rupesh, I just don't want to die without trying, without trying to do physics. And I was terrified. I didn't think I had the background, nothing. But I, I knew I had to do it. So Rupesh gets up. We didn't have cell phones at the time, so you can know how old I am. So he went back to a payphone and called his advisor, who was my professor in astronomy, and said, I have this crazy girl. No, I'm kidding. I have this girl. She has a scholarship that's only good for two more years, but she wants to do the whole physics major in those two years. What can we do about it? She has a very little background. In fact, I didn't even remember what A plus B, all that squared was. Like my algebra was rusty. So we go to this professor's office, Dr. Wardle, and I sit in front of him and I tell him, I really want to do this, but I don't even know where to, where to start. He hands me a book called Div, Grad, and Curl, which at the time was like a completely different language to me. I didn't even understand what it was. And it's a book on vector calculus, pretty... Uh, standard textbook and he said to me if you know this book by the end of the year I'm sorry by the end of the summer he told me this in May we'll let you skip through the first two years of the physics major so that you can complete the entire major uh, in the next couple of years so of course I thought he was joking I said forget it oh and by the way he said the only other person that's done this in the past there's a president his name is Ed Witten who, by the way, is one of the most famous genius physicists. He's the father of string theory, which nowadays is one of the most popular theories. So not only was he telling me that there was an incredible genius who had done this in the past, but also he was telling me that in two months I had to you know, do this incredible like two years of cramming of math and physics knowledge in order to start the major. So I don't know where I got this incredible perseverance and... I just set that goal and there was no way in this universe that I would not achieve it. I just set that goal for myself and I did it. So what happened was that summer I told Rupesh what I had to do and he was an incredible person and he devoted every day for these two months to mentoring and tutoring me. And it wasn't only just going through the exercises, it was actually believing in me and telling me that I could do it. And just that sort of hand-holding during the process of learning was so instrumental for me. And we really didn't have any time. So we, I learned everything from Sean's books, which were these practical books that had no theory in them. They were just like Saturdays, derivatives. Calculus, you know, it was two days for that. Sundays, integrals. Monday, linear algebra. I promise to you, it was, you get the point. It was just an insane summer. But it came September... And I took this test and I passed it. And then Rupesh kind of disappeared from my life because he wanted to really sort of let me do it on my own and let me feel how it was, was like for me to be independent. And the reason why I tell the Rupesh story is because it really formed uh, who I am today. Because I always wanted to compensate Rupesh for all his mentoring and tutoring. And I said to him, you know, like, please let me pay you for this, like all the work that you're doing. And he said to me, you know what, I grew up in Darjeeling in India. And there was an old man who used to climb up the mountain to come and teach me and my sisters tabla, the musical instrument, math and English. And we always wanted to compensate this old man. But he said, no, the only way you could ever pay me back is if you do this with someone else in the world. And that's how Rupesh passed on the mission to me. And that's how my mission in life started to inspire, encourage, and help all these other girls in the world who, like me, feel attracted to science, engineering, math, or technology, but somehow for either financial, social, any kind of reason, feel that they can't do it. Rupesh did that with me, and now it's my job to do that with a lot of other people and so to finish my story I passed that exam and I crammed the 
full physics major plus my philosophy major in the last two years at Brandeis and I graduated summa cum laude and with highest honors and I was just such a hard worker and a very perseverant person and then after that I went for a year and a half to Mexico and studied the masters in physics and I was invited to go to Stanford in 1998 to work with the current Secretary of Energy in the US, Steve Chu, who had just won the Nobel Prize in 1997. So it was an incredible opportunity, opportunity that I couldn't say no to. And I got to Stanford and I didn't end up finishing my dissertation with Steve. I ended up working with, with other professors, but within after five years, I became the first Mexican woman to graduate with a physics PhD from Stanford. And the reason why I say that is just to show that if I could do it, anyone can do it. Mm -hmm.